Um, now, so this is, this is the third, so we'll go on to the last presentation for this morning session. So please welcome our representatives from Malaysia. Um, as I know, we have two presenters from Malaysia, do we, right? And so we have 30 minutes for Malaysia in total. So please keep your time. Thank you so much. Very good morning to the audience. Uh, my name is Amiza Ismail uh, from Malaysia. Uh, we have uh, two representatives from Malaysia uh, for IPAs. Uh, I am from Maida, and our best partner uh, from MDEC uh, will also be presenting, uh, focusing on the ICT uh, startup industries in Malaysia. Okay. Um, Okay, let me introduce um, our agency, uh, MIDA. MIDA is the principal uh, Malaysian government agency responsible for uh, the promotion of industry and co coordination of uh, de uh, industrial development uh, for manufacturing sector and selected services sector in Malaysia. So we are the first point of contact for investors who intend to uh, set up bis uh, a business or project in manufacturing sectors and services sectors in Malaysia. Um, we have 23 overseas uh, officers, including one in Korea, in Seoul. And also the services that we provided uh, is uh, promotion activities. Uh, we also do approval on tax incentive, manufacturing license, and uh, op operational headquarters. And also, we facilitate the implementation of the, the, entire, uh, uh, the entire investment process. Um, okay. Um, this is to promote Malaysia. So why Malaysia is the strategic place uh, for you to invest. Okay, as you can see, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are, you know, uh, we are um, the, the best place uh, to invest uh, uh, among the factors that is political and economic stability, uh, well-developed infra infrastructure connectivity, as well as stable uh, banking system. And also, as you can see, our track record and performances as recorded uh, in the various world reports. Okay, uh, on the investment policies, um, we are, um, you know, uh, we are having uh, attractive um, investment policies. Uh, Malaysia business friendly policies and attractive fiscal packages initiated by the government have made Malaysia as one of the easiest places to commence business globally. Uh, and uh, as stated in the slides, that uh, we have a good equity ownership, repatriation of income, and employment of expatriate. And uh, we also have uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia's IP laws uh, are in conformance with international standards. So we have the inter intellectual property protection. Um, and also uh, we have signed agreement uh, on the investment guarantee agreement, IGAs, with more than 60 countries, including Korea. Okay, um, in terms of uh, investment opportunities in services sectors and manufacturing sectors, uh, investors that coming to Malaysia can take advantage of incentive provided by the Malaysian government to encourage the private sector and foreign investor participation in the economy based on the investment opportunities in services and manufacturing sectors. Um, and uh, as outlined in the respective promo promoted activities uh, that is on the slides, uh, on the uh, logistics hub, uh, ICT services, hotel and tourism, uh, and also on our manufacturing sectors uh, for quality investment in targeted uh, uh, industries. 
Okay, uh, this is the participation of Korean companies in Malaysia. Um, also, major collaboration projects with Korean participation. And uh, MSC status, Malaysia status for Korean companies. Uh, um, um, MSC Malaysia status uh, is a recognition by the government of Malaysia for ICT and ICT facilitated businesses that develop or use multimedia technology uh, to develop or um, to produce or enhance their product or services. Uh, I believe our partner, uh, MDEC, Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation, will go into detail on the ICT startup industries in Malaysia. Okay, um, a bit of uh, facts and figures. Uh, uh, investment by Republic of Korea in Malaysia. Uh, breakdown of the top 10 investment by country. Uh, and breakdown of investment by Republic of Korea in manufacturing sectors. And this is the role of uh, MIDA in ICT industries, whereby we work with the government in agencies in formulating the, the, the policies. We also do collaboration and partner with our uh, partner, MDEC. And also we have, uh, uh, we do facilitation um, for businesses, uh, including uh, ICT. Uh, we also have uh, Industry Academia Government Initiative. And um, we also, uh, to better off service to the startup company or ICT company, uh, we to restructure our function so that we can best uh, uh, serve uh, companies or, or startup companies that come to MIDA for facilitation or assistance. Okay, uh, these are the among the Malaysia startup ecosystem in Malaysia. Uh, for the government agencies, we have also education uh, assistance, uh, co-working spaces. We have also uh, uh, venture capitals. We provide grants or funding. Uh, we have programs uh, like incubators, accelerators and also um, uh, media help. Okay, my next presentation will be covered by our best partner, uh, Mr. Rafi. Hello, are we good on time? Yeah. So I'm Rafi. Um, my apologies, yesterday I forgot the name of my company, so here it is today. So wh what I'm going to talk about is basically why Malaysia, why the ecosystem that we built, and uh, the need of the government intervention in terms of helping the startup to grow beyond Malaysia. So in a nutshell, this is the internet adoption of the population in Malaysia. So as a country, we are 31 million people. Uh, I know that's the only size of Jakarta. Uh, but what we have done today is we have about 18 million Facebook users. Malaysians like to use and look at YouTube. We have about 3.5 million active Twitter users. And we managed to profile 930,000 of our Grab drivers within five years. It took us close to about 47 years to profile our taxi, the, the conventional taxi driver. But the work that we have done with Grab, it managed and expedite the need of the information that the government needs in terms of profiling our taxi drivers. So active user or the, the, the internet penetration in the whole of Malaysia is about 79%. Uh, we have about 75% active social media and we have about 143% pen, uh, penetration of mobile users. So, if you were ever in Malaysia, uh, if you see an individual with two or three devices with them, it's actually common with uh, quite a number of them. So for Malaysia, whenever we go out and we sell the country, we always sell ASEAN as a region. We don't go out and tell people that Malaysia is this, Malaysia is that. It's always the word of ASEAN. You know, 
if you see the panelists in front or the speaker in front, most of us are actually like brothers and sisters, where we actually do help one another. We do have an established trade agreement for the last 50 years. And most of the thing that we have in terms of resource, whether it's private resource or public resource, is being shared between all of us. So for, for Malaysia, or sorry, for ASEAN itself, we are the fifth largest economy in the world. We have a total of about 639 million, maybe more now. And our GDP is actually on the growth of 6% average yearly. So a bit about Malaysia. So in terms of corporates uh, or ownership in Malaysia, uh, in terms of salary, we are actually 400%. Sorry. Everybody can hear me, right? Can you hear me? Can I? It's a bit difficult for me holding a mic. So, So in terms of wages, uh, differentiator between one level to another level is about 50% different. Inflation, about 5%. Uh, and out of all this, the government still emphasize on the benefit towards the employee. So whatever it is, employee is actually number one. Yeah? So in terms of taxation, this is only on uh, technology sector. It has 0% of uh, tax for electronics and 0% uh, tax from revenue that coming in from technology. Uh, and term of ownership is, sorry, uh, for ownership, for you to own a company in Malaysia is actually 200% lower than any other country, developed countries. Uh, if you can see here, the rental as well as the power usage, as well as the compliance uh, and <coughs> audit costs. Technology failed me today. So MDAC as a whole, these are the charter and pillar that we are looking at. So we are driving investment. We are part of the investment promotion agency. Maida is our big sister. Uh, building local tech champion, catalyzing digital innovation, and propagating, sorry, propagating digital inclusivity. So driving investment is basically like any other IPAs. They drive investments toward the country, regardless whether it's technology or anything under the sun. Building local tech champion, this is what I'm going to talk about more after this. Catalyzing digital innovation is basically where we encourage the use and adoption of technology. Propagating, uh, propagating digital inclusivity where we get the public to use or to gain revenue from technology. So this, in a nutshell, what we have the tech company that we're actually hosting here in Malaysia right now, with an investment of close to about 80 billion uh, as of last year, we, we created about close to 200,000 jobs. And uh, the number of active companies with us under the MSC banner is about 3,213 companies. So if you are looking at the startup ecosystem, the dream or the end goal that the startup is actually looking at is to go exit or get exit. So from the last uh, five years down the road, Malaysia actually produced the largest number of tech IPO companies. This is one of our, our up and coming companies. Uh, we actually found them about four years ago. Uh, it's a four-man show company, uh, two, two Australian and uh, another two Malaysian that wanted to build something which they feel at that point of time Netflix is too expensive for them. And the other bits that they are trying to counter is piracy in ASEAN. So they came, they set up shop, we give them whatever necessary that they actually need in terms for them to grow. So as of today, uh, I flick themselves, I have about close to 400 staff full-time. They have about 24 to 26 uh, present in the market. Uh, these are the number that we can disclose. 
So if you are looking at the total investment to Netflix, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's close to about half a billion US. And they have about 15 million active subscriber. And these are some of the venture capital that are in Malaysia that invested into them. So this is our upcoming startups. So if you see on the left side, this is purely local Malaysian, and this is local foreign owner startup. So if you see, we have multiple tiers. Those people from Series A all the way up to Series Cs and ITOs. So we are not only limiting ourselves looking at the pre or the ideation stage, but we actually provided help all the way to the company can actually go extend beyond Malaysia or going listed. This <coughs> so last year, we came up with this initiative called Malaysia Digital Hubs. Uh, part and parcel is because Malaysia, or sorry, MDAC never looked into the growth of the startup. Our charter has always been the big boys, the like of uh, Hyundai, the like of NEC, Panasonic, or Samsung, or whatever big giant company. So what and how we foresee this innovation within the corporate are stuck. They do not know where to go, or they do not know how to innovate anymore. And the culture of the corporate nowadays is always about buying the smaller guys, putting in the solution into their ecosystem. So what we did in terms of encouraging that mindset or that way of business nowadays, we created this brand called Malaysia Digital Hubs. It's purely run by the private sector. So where, where MDEC come in is basically only on the incentive and support, and the rest is basically we married them together. So if you see here, we have five uh, cool working space that we actually audit and verify that they have the proper ecosystem in order for them to support the startups. So the tech company that we have been engaging in terms of helping is the like of Alibaba, Autodesk, Aliki from France, Asiata, Microsoft, and AWS. So what this tech giant will do, they, have, they are no longer... I would say they are no longer in control in terms of getting their leverage on the startups because we have predefined that. How we structured the program is basically we interviewed most of our startup and asked them what they actually want from this giant in order for them to collaborate together. Right? So we do have a talent portal. Uh, Warp is actually one of our partners, and we have identified about eight premium tech, company, uh, premium tech university in Malaysia that solely concentrated on building talent on tech. We have the market access partner. This is where, let's say, one of you reside in Malaysia that then you are thinking to go some part of the Europe. We do have a partner that we already structured a deal with that you can have access to the Euro with a lot, lot more, a lower cost. We have those corporate innovation some of them are actually government-linked companies. Some of them are purely private companies. So instead of them going out looking and participating uh, in an open tender, we actually get them to come in and pitch to the startups. What sort of problem that they want to solve? What sort of problem that they want to adopt? Oh, sorry. What sort of solution that they want to adopt? Yeah? Then we have our listed... Uh, venture capitals, as well as the support uh, and incentive from the Malaysian government. So this is new. Uh, this is called Mal Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Visa Pass. So we have two types. One is new entrepreneur, one is established entrepreneurs. So new entrepreneurs is where we invite those people who have an idea but wanted to build, and we give them one year straight provided that they actually fill in all these criteria. So established entrepreneur is basically like all of you in the room. You have a company back home and you wanted to expand. So what we actually give is a five years uh, working visa, uh, provided that you're going to set up a legal entity in Malaysia. So this, is there some water? No water. This is one of our uh, initiatives that we actually run early of this year. It's Islamic Digital Economy, IDE. So why we do this, uh, Malaysia has always been deemed as one of the fastest growing 
uh, Islamic adoption policies and regulation in the world. Uh, if you see the ranking here, uh, Halal Food, we basically come out the framework, the policy, the guideline. Islamic finance, a lot of the banking and finance institutions in Malaysia actually adopt the finance, oh, sorry, the Islamic finance way of doing business. And first, in, in halal travel. So we do have the proper ecosystem in place. Thank you very much. Um, minum. So we do have proper ecosystem in place. So how, how we want to, this, to do this is basically instead of the policy or the government actually driving it, we want the private sector to run it. So we came up with um, Mia Guide. It's a guide for any tech company that wanted to venture into the Islamic tech. So it's readily available. If you go to our website, you can actually download it there. So it's an approved guideline by the Security Commission of Malaysia as well as the Federal Bank of Malaysia. And we are actually working with a few partners from Middle East to make it uh, standardized globally. Yeah. We have this, um, specifically like my neighbor just now, they, uh, they have the bank, the financial sector that actually run the fintech center, so do we. Uh, the only difference between us and them is this is still government, uh, we, the government is still championing it. Part and parcel of this is because of the regulation from the Federal Bank. They want someone who have no business interest uh, managing the data that uh, both the public and private sector is actually putting in for companies to develop. So we do provide space, accelerator program, academy, Finance, central bank sandboxing, ECF, and P2P. So all of this is being championed by the government body, but is being run by the private sector. Yeah. So aside to we, we understand by building the ecosystem without the actual fund coming in, there's no point also as well. So part and parcel of what we we we. We suggested for the government to come up with a new incentive specifically for the venture capital. So the Malaysian government actually committed a billion ringgit for matching. We give you corporate tax exemption, deduction, exemption, as well as reduce the qualification for investment threshold. Like, if I'm not mistaken, quite a number of these uh, tax as well as threshold is being practiced by a lot of countries. Because whenever you talk about venture capital, they don't come into the country with 1 million US or 2 million US. You're talking about 100 of million of US dollars. So we regulate it. We, we make it easier for them to come into the country, set up a shop, and invest it into both local and foreign Malaysian companies. This is the other bits that we have. ADEX is Asia Data Exchange Center. We have 10 data scientists in residence to help the startup at any point of the day, and it's free. You know, we understand the, 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 the hiring process for data scientists is not cheap. If you're talking about global standard, you're talking about more or less 200,000 US a year for a startup, sorry, for a data scientist that are very specific and niche an expert to the, the, to, to the vertical that they are championing it at. So the aim of ADAC is basically to produce about 25,000 data professional by 2020. And on top of that 25,000, 5,000 of them are data scientists, which is specifically towards the vertical that they are championing. Yeah? And if you, if you notice, Malaysia is actually very strong on e-commerce. So we developed this program called Digital Free Trade Zone. Um, it's a program that we encourage those SMEs who does not understand the tech or the enabler of the new enabler to do business. So we actually gang up, or we partner up with a number of MNCs to provide a single platform for them to sell. 
I can give you an example, a farmer from, let's say, one, one of the rural areas in Malaysia that actually sells durians. Everybody know durians, right? Right? So imagine durian. If you want to export durians to China, at least it will take you a minimum of 7 to 10 working days. So by the time durian came to China and to the end user, you can't eat it anymore. So what we did, we spoke to the regulator in China and Malaysia to shorten that. Basically from 6 hours to 3 hours clearance. Uh, cargo from 4 hours to five, 1 for 5 hours. So aside to this, we do have partnership with uh, where, warehouses, logistics, you know, to ensure that the product from end to end can, de can be delivered within time that we committed. Sorry. So that's about it. Any question for me or for my colleague from Ida? Or are you guys all hungry for lunch already? Yeah. <laughs> all okay, right. So thank you for your informative.